Um, I want to get to some of the questions that came in beforehand because we've been mostly working off the questions that have been coming up. But there are a couple of questions about Chiari and scoliosis. So how often do you see Chiari and scoliosis associated? And do you ever see the Chiari diagnosed before the scoliosis? I assume in pediatrics. <laughs> Excuse me. So <laughs> um, we know that Chiari is a risk factor for syringomyelia, right? Those two things are clearly linked. We know that syringomyelia is a risk factor for scoliosis. Those are clearly linked. So yes, absolutely, Chiari can cause scoliosis. Chiari leads to syringomyelia, which leads to scoliosis. Now, can Chiari cause scoliosis without syringomyelia? The short answer to that question is probably not. There, there have been some pretty big studies looking at, looking at large numbers of patients you know, by, by screening MRI results. And there are definitely some, some people who have both Chiari and syringomyelia, but that, or, I'm sorry, both Chiari and, and scoliosis, but that's kind of similar to what we talked about earlier with Chiari and headache. Those are both common-ish you know, uh, uh, conditions, particularly in teenagers. So we definitely know that Chiari is related to scoliosis with syrinx as the bridge. Not necessarily clear that, that it causes scoliosis without syringomyelia. Now, the follow-up question should be, will the scoliosis get better if you decompress the Chiari? And the answer to that generally depends on how severe is the scoliosis. So if you have a, a relatively minor curve, you know, 15, 20 degrees with syringomyelia, you decompress the Chiari, the syringomyelia gets better, the scoliosis may stabilize and not, and not progress as well. But if it's already to 30, 40, 50 degrees, once you get to a certain point with scoliosis, gravity kind of takes over and there's not much you can do except to, to correct that with a, with a scoliosis surgery. Mm -hmm. um, this is a good question. So this kind of has to do with syrinx location. So with Chiari, scoliosis is, I'll throw in tethered cord because I'm gonna bring that up in a bit. Um, is there a particular part of the spine that that syrinx is likely to form or is it possible that it would be not in a position that you are used to seeing? Is that possible too? So It's possible, yes. So the, the syrinx that, that occurs with Chiari, so for, first of all, syringomyelia is almost always caused by something else, right? So when it happens, it's, being, it's because something is messing with the way spinal fluid moves in and around the spinal cord and that's what leads to syringomyelia. Now, I can't give you any more technical answer than that because, frankly, we don't really know exactly why it develops. We're pretty confident that it's got something to do with the way spinal fluid moves. So if you have syringomyelia, our job is to look for what is causing it. Chiari is, a, is, is probably the most common. Tethered cord is another possible cause of syringomyelia. Um, if you've had a previous you know, significant trauma and there's scarring, uh, you know, like a spinal cord injury type of trauma, um, there can be problems with scar that lead to syringomyelia as well. But, but for now, we'll focus on Chiari and tethered cord. With Chiari, that's a problem at the top of the spine. So the most common syrinx we see is in the cervical spine. And then second to that is actually the entire spine, so cervical and, and, and thoracic. Um, rarely do you see a Chiari that's causing a thoracic syrinx, so lower spinal cord syrinx, and not at, with a normal cervical spine. It's possible. It definitely happens, but it's not very common. The same really applies to tethered cord. Tethered cord can cause lower spinal cord syrinx. It's actually much more rare for it to cause for it to cause syrinx higher in the spine. And I, I can't recall ever seeing it, an entire whole cord syrinx from a tethered cord, although that definitely happens from PR. And what about scoliosis? Is there a particular location that you would expect to see it, or uh, or I guess if it with syringo, what, what location of syringo? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so in general, the large there, there is good data on this. I actually can speak to this with some with some some certainty. So basically, the larger the syrinx is, and the and the more spinal segments it covers, the more likely it's going to be associated with scoliosis. It's not necessarily whether it's cervical or thoracic. It's just if it's bigger, you know, fatter, longer, uh, then it's then it's more troublesome. Okay. Um, in a child with scoliosis, Chiari, and syrinx, do you recommend bracing or do you do a surgery first? Um, how do you usually handle that? So that goes a little bit back to what we talked about earlier. If you have a Chiari and a syrinx, you need a Chiari decompression operation. There's widespread consensus on that point. Um, and then what happens after that really depends on how severe is the scoliosis. If it's not that bad, maybe bracing is enough. That's a discussion to have with your orthopedic surgeon. 
if it's if it's pretty significant, probably end up with with a scoliosis operation. Again, that's going to be up to the orthopedist. Okay. 